the year goes on, I get closer and closer. To learn new skills and to build new acumen. We can always touch. It's not. When you get that, then you get a lot more excited about being around children. Normal, in a sense, and with all of the changes. Of course. Or how you can transform your own business. I'm developing the whole child, social, emotional. The traditional route of teaching of young people. How to set boundaries because this little victim here needs to know how to. Doing very well. So they use that term. Sometimes expanded them to go up to 40 minutes. All of those things in education, of course, those things are important. Student is going to our heads and our lungs. The affirmations in the mirror for about two minutes. What did you do in order to get yourself going? This is amazing. It happens what seems to happen quite a bit in our school. For the families to come and they are uh, not really for the child or is it for us or for the parents. And doing new things for our brain. Who's orchestrating everything in this universe? Which parts of the brain uh, are you based on that map that we have? See you with your smiling face. At all, thank you very much for allowing me to join you. Namaste to you, my friends. Hello, hello, namaskar and welcome everyone. Thank you to all who have joined us from different parts of the world to our early childhood global spotlight talk. My name is Atul and I'm a proud member and founder of this wonderful community. I'm also a co-founder of a preschool chain, Wow Kids. We have more than 225 centers in 21 states of our country, Wow Kids is winner of 24 national awards. And we are proud to announce that we've recently won two prestigious awards, Best Preschool Chain of the Year 2022, and also awarded for innovation and excellence in early childhood education and development in two different forums recently. We at Wow Kids are also honored to have been featured on the cover page and cover story in CIO magazine recently. All right. For those who are new to the show, generally the purpose and intent of this show is to understand and explore the most important time in the child's early years of growth, especially from birth to six years of age. We invite experts on different subjects from different parts of the world to our early childhood global community and have them share their experiences and knowledge with our community. Now, before we get started, let me quickly introduce these three wonderful ladies we have with us today. Okay, so we have with us today Prerna Richards. She is a keynote speaker, behavior coach, and NAEYC consultant. She has over 37 years of experience and is a registered master level trainer with the Texas Early Childhood Professional Development System. She is the winner of Susan Hargrave Trainer of the Year Award from TAEYC in 2020. Her business, Together We Grow, supports educators and parents by providing resources and consulting services. I welcome Prerna to the show. Hi, Thank Prerna. you, Atul. Hi, everyone. So nice to join you. Thank you. We also have another special guest today, Kari Simons Kling. She holds a bachelor's degree in elementary and special education, a master's degree in education in counseling, and is certified trainer in the Nurtured Heart Approach. She is proud mom of twin boys with over 40 years of experience as educator, parent, coach, TV show host, speaker, and author. She has been sought after speaker for many national international conferences. Also, today we want everyone to know that Kari is proud to announce that she will be host of an upcoming TV show, Parenting GPS, which is navigating your parenting journey which will begin airing globally on Roku and also on YourAmericaTV.com beginning in January 2023. Kari has also written two books, created an educational video and is currently an executive contributor for Brains Magazine. I welcome Kari to the Spotlight Show. Hi, Kari. 
Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Great, great. So I'm also honored to be joined by our very own Marian Herman, who is also the moderator of this community and my co-host for today. She is a music director with a bachelor's degree in music and a master's in education. She is the founder of internationally enjoyed music with Mare brain research based program. Mare has also done a TEDx talk titled Building Brains with Music and has recently launched her book Building Brains with Music. Welcome, Marianne, and once again, I welcome all three of you on this wonderful show, <coughs> friends and everyone who's watching. If you have any questions during the show, feel, feel free to comment. We would be happy to take them up during the show. Okay, from here, I pass on the show to my co-host for today, Marianne, to take this forward. Thank you, Atul. Thank you. Um, it's so good to be back here after... Uh, a break for so long. And I want to say hi to Joe Herzog and Nan Prevost for hopping in with us. Um, that is really great to see you guys as well as WOW Kids and some um, WOW Kids teachers. And I want to say hi to Sorry. Joe. Sorry, I'm, I'm getting an echo. I know. I was too. <laughs> Okay, so we fixed that. Okay, good. Um, yeah. I want to jump into this, and I had uh, a prayer, and I, and I have uh, often talk about a behavior, and, um, and Dr. Kathleen as well, who um, we will have in the future to, to go further into this topic in another direction. But one of the things, as I teach the music with Mayor classes uh, every week, I am with parents and children. Um, I like to say, real you know and just go around talking about this i'm actually still doing it you know and the parents will come in and they'll be like I'm looking at their watch and checking out um a message and and then saying oh my child just seems so stressed out and i'm thinking it's not the kid <laughs> you know and and that's where the parents seem to um um, lose the direction a little bit. So I thought, wouldn't it be wonderful to have two experts that I n have respect for what you do and, and enjoy the commentary and the post that you put up for parents. Um, and I encourage parents that afterwards, please share this information with your families. Um, watch when prayer not posts something and when Carrie posts something. Um, and, and ladies, please put your URLs in the feed so they can find it easily. So I'm gonna jump in here and, um, and we can decide who goes first in a moment. But the, quest, the first thing I wanna talk about is why is it that parents see an increase in kids' holiday behaviors running high? Do children are children experiencing anxiety? And why might all this increase during the holiday season? So Carrie, you're first on my screen. So I'm going to ask okay. you to go first. And then Prerna, add, add your commentary to it when she's finished. And anyone with questions anywhere along the way, put them up. And I will put them on the screen so that they can see them. Okay, Carrie. Um, you know, I, I had to laugh when you were describing about the parents looking at their watches. Uh, a very funny thing came to my mind when you were doing that pre-COVID, pre-shutdown. Pre uh, some friends of ours were going to come over one evening in between Christmas and New Year's. And she called me the night before and she said, I'm sorry, we're going to have to cancel. She said, I'm giving myself a timeout. And I <laughs> laughed at the comment. I said, tell me what, what's going on? And she said, I'm over, this is an adult. I'm overstimulated. There's been too many activities, too much sugar, not enough sleep, and I just can't do it. And I thought that was so insightful for an adult to say that. How are our young children feeling? You know, the holidays are such a wonderful time of year. And as parents, we want to give our kids all of the experiences to go see the lights, to go see the, the play, to go you know, to the parties and on and on and on. But I really believe that for so many families, it's too much, that less is more, that the greatest gift we can do, and you just alluded to it, Marianne, 
is to keep ourselves calm and not be overstimulated ourselves because our children, exactly what you said, will pick up on, on those feelings. I, I couldn't agree more. I think we're all like-minded people talking about this propaganda yeah. of less is more. I honestly believe that that is so powerful. And to Mayor, your point of anxiety and the holidays, you know, <coughs> those things may be happening um, that maybe we can become more cognizant about as parents and grown-ups uh, with children in our lives. Uh, there may be families um, who haven't connected with other families since COVID. So this may be the first Christmas or the holidays that they're reuniting or reconnecting. Mm -hmm. And from a child's perspective, that could bring on anxiety, but also from the grown-up's perspective, it could bring on anxiety because, you know, when you're with family, it could be joyful, but also stressful. That's the reality of being part of an extended family that you may or may not have seen. And so I think prepping your children if they haven't seen grandparents in a while, they haven't seen aunts and uncles and cousins in a while, talk about what to expect that might help with the feeling of anxiety and being anxious. Um, and talking about it makes it open so that I don't have to experience this unknown feeling, but my grown up is feeling it, I'm feeling it, and it's okay to talk about it. And then to have a plan that, you know, uh, I, I remember when I went to see my grandkids in Switzerland. Um, even though my daughter is a teacher and I'm in education, I really appreciated her telling me before I came that the little guy is going through a shy phase. He's, mm -hmm. He was just turning mm -hmm. two and she reminded me, she said, he's a little bit shy. So when you come at the airport, he may not come right to you. And I said, great reminder. I appreciate that. Thank you. And so I had to warm myself up to him, right? So if you're mm -hmm. meeting family for holidays, reminding the family members that so-and-so will take some time to warm up and reminding your child that you may take some time to warm up um, mm -hmm. helps with the transition. And the other thing that I love what my daughter did was she had the kids draw drawings for me and then she encouraged them to come to me to show the drawings. So it was a gradual, let's get to know each other. Let's reconnect. Let's play again. Um, I think it's a fair emotion to keep in mind. Uh, for people that we may not have seen in a while. And from a child's perspective, it's a long time. If you saw me six months ago or nine months ago or a year ago or two years ago. So um, I think stress is high. So be mindful of it. Take care of you so you can show up for the little ones in your life because they're picking up on the cues. Right. And, and holiday time, um, we as adults, we remember last Christmas <laughs> or Hanukkah or Diwali, whatever holiday is being celebrated, Ramadan, you know, I mean, they don't all happen at the same time, but all people experience the same types of anxieties, whether it's right now during this Christmas Hanukkah season, which happened to be pretty close together this year. Um, everybody experiences that, but we adults have the memory of the year before. So good point from both of you about how when we see the children for the holidays, to them, we might almost be a total stranger again. Right. They might not have the memories from the year before. And Carrie, I saw you uh, uh, writing a little bit, so I'm thinking you made yourself some notes that you want to add I to. I did. Go well, right ahead. I did. Um, you're very observant, Marianne. Um, That's my one job. Of the <laughs> that I know, and you do it so well. Um, Prima said something that made me, I wanted to write it down and think about it. You know, so many times at the holidays, and she's exactly right, you know, they, the younger the child, the less they may remember from the year before or even six months before in terms of that person. And sometimes as adults, in fact, I had a parent coaching um, on Friday and this was part of our conversation. The mom, my client, who has two, two young children, went to visit her parents, so the children's grandparents, and they hadn't seen them in about a year. And uh, she was prepping the children about, you know, go hug your grandma, go hug, you know, go, go hug your dad, go, or your grandpa. And my thought that came to mind is as, as parents, we want our, our parents, the children's grandparents sometimes to feel that connection and that love. But I encourage parents, 
please don't force your children to sit on your, you know, on their grandpa's lap or hug somebody they don't feel like they know. Let it be gradual, um, just like that, because you can be doing more harm in the long run um, by forcing someone to feel that they have to be affectionate if they don't feel it naturally. Let it happen gradually. And it will, Kerry, such a good point. It will happen naturally because the child is not forced and they have some agency in the movement that they gravitate towards the grandparents and they naturally go without feeling exactly. forced into it. That relationship, it takes a little bit of time, so be patient. Um, because from grown up, you know, I'm a grandparent of four children now uh, almost. And so you want that instant connection, you want that hug, you want the go in and take, but such a valid point let's respect the children and not force them to give hugs and force them to say bye and force them to say hello but giving them space and agency allows them to naturally mm -hmm. gravitate towards it without feeling forced exactly so let's talk a little bit about let's delve more into this a little deeper about how is this time of year and the children are sensing a type of anxiety or curiosity, like why are there trees around and how come we don't have a tree or all these things. And the parents are busy with, well, I've got to plan the dinner, I have to go shop and have to get presents. At, and they might not take the time to address the issues the child has, the questions the child has, because they're caught up in what they need to do. And then the child starts acting out because they are confused. And if parents could take the time to answer some of those questions so the child feels safer in the environment. So how can we help the children manage their own emotions during this exciting time and share some practical strategies for managing stress during the holidays for families with young children? And I'll just begin by saying one of the things I found was that at the beginning of the day, I would sit Joya down or while I'm dressing her, would tell her, today, we are going to do this, this, this. So she wasn't surprised and also give something to her. And here's what you're going to do to help me. Or is there something in there that you would like to be a part of so that they're not feeling like they're being forced to be involved in something they might not feel safe to be involved in? So I'm going to let Prana go first on this one. Okay, just uh, just a quick thing. Um, Atul had your hand up and you wanted to give a shout out. Do you want to jump in? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Yes, cool. I want to give a shout out to everyone who's watching the show. We have uh, Jyoti Reddy. Hi, Jyoti, Pushpa, Satyarthi. Then we have Wow Kids Small Step Preschool. Manjula Pebeti. Hi, Manjula, ma'am. We have Liz Hins Hannan from San Francisco. Hi, Liz. And we have Arundhati Goswami. Hi, Arundhati. Thank you so much for joining the show. All right. Anyone else whom we have missed out, please mention your name in your chat so that we know that you are watching us. Thank you so much, Prerna. Thank you. Please carry on. I'm so sorry. No, you're fine. You're fine. This is a just a real conversation. That's just what happened. Yes. So, uh, Mayor, to your point, I, I absolutely 100% agree with your strategy of letting children know what the day is going to bring and, and what they can look forward to and how much control they can have and what, where they want to contribute or where they might have questions. Um, and I think also, you know, um, as you prepare for the holidays, you were just talking a minute ago about family members we may or may not have seen on a regular basis. Um, I just thought of this strategy that is quite helpful. My daughter does it with my granddaughter. She has an album of pictures of people. So before she goes to see them, she will go through them and remember this is who this is and this is how they're connected and this is who we're going to see at this and this. So if there's pictures that you can bring it to life, um, I think that's a that's a great reminder. Um, reminding yourself, <clears throat> you know, we all have alluded to this, and I wanted to go a little bit deeper with this. Our to-do list as grown-ups for the holidays is very long, and it's self-imposed. Mm -hmm. We are doing this to ourselves, right? So 
I think allowing yourself grace and allowing yourself an out if you don't feel up to it, it's okay. Personally, for me this year, I have been so busy with work that we didn't even bother to put lights outside. And I'm okay with that. The, the decorations inside are minimal and I'm okay with that. Um, I was having a little bit of a guilty conscious thinking, oh, my grandkids are coming and I would really like to make it magical for them. And my husband reminded me, he said, they're going to have a good Christmas, whether you do all this running around or not. So let's be present and let's really just enjoy without feeling the stress. And right before we hopped on today, I asked my granddaughter, who's nine, I said to her, I'm going to have this talk about children and parents and Christmas. Is there anything you want grown-ups to know from a child's perspective? Nice idea. <laughs> Always ask her these questions. <laughs> and she said, Christmas is already awesome. Christmas is already amazing. I said, why is it? And she said, because of Santa. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So from her perspective, whatever you're doing or not doing is irrelevant. It's already magical. <laughs> and, the, you know, the only thing she wanted people to know was make sure you put the fire out because Santa might get burned. <laughs> <laughs> and, and to leave enough cookies for Santa and for the children because they like to eat the same cookies that the Santa's getting, right? And I, I was really, it was an insightful comment from a child's perspective. We go all out with our to-do list and running around, gathering this, that, because we want to create memories for our children. We want to have the magical time. But from a child's perspective, mm -hmm. it is already magical. <clears throat> it's Christmas. So relax mm -hmm. and enjoy the season, Hanukkah, Diwali, whatever the festival you're celebrating. From a child's perspective, it is already beautiful. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we ruin it in our anxiety, fast pace, got to get this done by. I'm right. in the same place as you, Prerna, this year where my tree has limited uh, ornaments on it because halfway through I thought, what am I doing? <laughs> you know, like I, I don't, we don't need to do all of this and, and to focus on the time we're going to spend together and the meal which is a next question, but Carrie, I wanted to first see if you had something you wanted to add to this um, strategies, strategies for managing the emotions. I do, and Prina said it so well. Um, and I'd like to add something to that too, which is really a, a present day um, kind of thing. Two, two things, the first is I always encourage parents to try to connect the activity, um, the special holiday activity that you're doing with your family traditions. So, you know, this is something I did with grandma when I was a little girl or a little boy. So that, you know, it's it. sometimes we do that, but we don't always tell them that. But here's the bigger picture for me. And I'm reminded of the quote, and I'm sure we're all familiar with it. Comparison is the thief of all joy. And what I mean by that is I see, and, and I say this without judgment. So if anybody's watching and you've done this on your Facebook page, I'm not, I'm not relating it to a certain person. But so many people this time of year, you know, here we are at the Nutcracker, here we are at the Festival of Lights Parade, here we are at, you know, this activity. And every night it feels like, you know, they're doing another activity. And for someone who's not doing that, and has young children, I know that a lot of people feel like I'm a failure. You know, I'm not doing all of those things with my kids. And, and then they feel badly because they're not. And I want people to normalize. And, you, you know, I'm you don't have to put it on Facebook or Instagram or anything like that. But normalize. We're sitting in our pajamas watching a family movie together. You know, it doesn't have to be this you know, getting dressed up, going out, spending money kind of activity to make it magical. True. Uh, Mayor um, and Carrie, I think um, it's so fantastic that we're taking the time to talk about this and to reinforce the message, less is more, mm -hmm. quiet is okay, just being quietly at home is okay, we don't have to compete. You're so true, you know, when we compete, it takes the joy out. Um, we have a very simple tradition in our family. And um, if you like, I can share 
couple of things that we do in our family in case somebody would like to adopt that habit in theirs. You want me to go okay. ahead, Shikhar? Go right ahead. I wasn't sure if another time would be better. So ever since the, our girls are little, so our girls are in their 30s now, and now we have grandkids, we have a very simple tradition that I have always had a basket of books by the tree. And we, we put I put 24 books in it, and we read a book by the tree every night. It may be a book from their room. It may be a book that I bought. It doesn't matter, but it, it became a tradition to read by the lights. And so whenever your tree goes up or if the tree is not up, just the lamp light would work, getting on the carpet would work, whatever it is, just something. We used to always read in the bed for the cozy time, but we started doing it by the tree around Christmas time. And so it became a countdown. So the advent calendar, of course, the girls got and the grandkids get, but, but the book became the countdown. How many books were left in the basket was a countdown. And the other thing that we do is at least a couple of times during the Christmas season, we'll have a picnic dinner. We'll put a blanket out and sit by the tree. So all the lights would be turned off and we would eat by the tree lights. And uh, the other thing that I was just doing yesterday with my granddaughter was going through my old cookbook. When I first came to Scotland, because I didn't do cooking when I was in India growing up. I was very young when I got married. So <laughs> when I first got to Scotland, I started my own cookbook with recipes. And just yesterday, uh, we were doing it as a joint activity. So I was reading the ingredients and she was making the shopping list for the Christmas cake. So in Scotland, Christmas cake is a huge thing. And I've made it for all these years. But now we've, we're doing it as a shared activity where she's helping me write the ingredients list and we're going to go shop together and we're going to cook together. So just some simple things that really focus being experience is the key. We're, we're, we're trying to bank in experiences than uh, monetary materialistic things. The focus is on experience. What are you going to remember is the experiences. Mm -hmm. That is so true. And it was a good segue into what was going to be the next um, question because you brought up the food. And I love the idea of the books under the tree. It's mm -hmm. almost like an advent calendar, but we, mm -hmm. you know, and I think that is something I'm going to suggest for my granddaughter. So that's wonderful. But food does play a role in <clears throat> behavior during the holidays. It, um, in an uncomfortable way and in comfortable ways. Uncomfortable in that sometimes they are filled with too many sweets or things that their body are not used to that might be too rich mm -hmm. um, and, and comfortable because there's that memory of. Now, I come from an Italian-Irish background, but to us, the biggest favorite holiday is Christmas Eve, where we do the Feast of the Seven Fishes. And my daughter now is 33, but this to her is the holiday um, because we talk about shopping. We go shopping together. We involve every single family member that's coming in what their role is, what they are contributing. And it's such a very special thing. So from when she was a little girl and my mom was around, I know, and that um, would be a lead into our next question. So wait, 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 Mayor, I'm curious. What is the Seven Fish Feast? You can't just name it and not mention it. You know, you know I'm going to be curious. I don't know what that is. Tell um, me. So traditionally, um, the, the highest holy day of the year in, in, um, in um, the Italian Catholic tradition is um, Christmas Eve. Um, because it leads up to the birth of, you know, and, and it is a holy day. And that means that you can't eat meat. So the night before Christmas, we eat seven fishes, um, all different kind of fish. Um, and there can be no meat at the meal. So, you know, we will have anchovies on the antipasto and shrimp cocktail and clams and scallops and calamari and galamaria, which is uh, calamari that is stuffed. Um, we'll have mussels um, and um, bacala, which is salted codfish. Um, but my daughter plays a role in this. And then the tradition is passed to her husband, who's his family now actively participates. And it became 
um, a routine, um, a tradition now where his family has learned about the seven fishes and they participate. So that's how food plays a part for us. We look forward to that. And so cool. Should, I learned something new. I did not know this. I can tell you more about another yeah. time. There's, <laughs> actually, sure <laughs> there's actually a movie on Netflix called Feast of the Seven Fishes. Um, so I should check it out. It. Uh, <laughs> you can watch it. Um, but, you know, that's what we are getting ready for now. And my daughter loves it. And we try to share it with someone new every year. So, um, I don't know which one of you might be ready to talk about food traditions or how food plays a role in ch children's behavior during the holidays. So, um, Carrie, would you like to speak first? Sure. Um, and I learned something new as well about, about the Feast of the Seven Fishes. Thank you for that. Well, I wish um, you guys were close by. I'd have you stop over. Well, thank you. Um, I think, you know, you you really, you said so much about, you know, how it can be, food can be comfortable a comfort food and also uncomfortable with perhaps, you know, things that aren't as um, familiar and maybe too rich, maybe too much sugar. I would also just like to throw in there that um, a lot of preservatives and dyes can really throw off children's behavior. And so, you know, I would just say if your, ch if your child is not used to eating all of that, and, and if they are, maybe look at how to, to decrease that, because that's something that's been known for a long time. Um, my thought is it, it's it's the food, it's the sitting down at the table, everything you talked about. Um, one of the things that's special in our family is that we use the dishes um, on Christmas Day, or we use them on, on many special occasions, but on Christmas Day, that were my grandmother's that I ate off of when I was a little girl. And so again, it's that connection to family, it's that connection to our legacy, to our our family traditions. Um, and so I think just also, you know, what you said about having kids, um, both of you had talked about having kids, you know, participate in, um, you know, the cooking, the shopping, it's, you know, so many reading and math skills, and that that could be a show for a, a whole other day. But I think mm -hmm. letting the kids be a part of it, and letting them make some decisions is all part of that inclusion. And not just saying, well, these are our family traditions, this is how we do it but allowing them to create new traditions. So for example, you could say, you know, we usually have pie for dessert. You know, mm -hmm. would you rather have pumpkin pie or pecan pie or yes. whatever so that they have input as well. Um, and it's not just the adults that are saying, this is how we do it, but getting their input and their, you know, their, their choices to be a part of it. Yeah. And I think um, one of the things too, and you know, like, and we can combine these. So when you answer prayer now, please feel free to combine. But we also, excuse me, <clears throat> the different foods, like my dad made the best cheesecake ever. My opinion, but it's... <coughs> uh, anyway, when he passed, my daughter said, I want to make grandpa's cheesecake recipe. Mm -hmm. Now, I had it, um, but I knew it was important to her. So rather than say, but I want to make it, I didn't. You know, it was going to be special to me, but I thought more important and passed it on to her. And this is her way of being with grandpa on Christmas Eve. You know, that food. And when I make the calamaria where I'm stuffing the squid, that's me remembering my mom. Mm -hmm. And not everybody likes that. And they'll say, why do you make this? None of us eat it. I'm eating it with my mom, you mm -hmm. know, um, but you'll also not to put the stress on a child that is sitting there going, what's that? <laughs> yeah. Don't force them to eat something because then the next time you're having a meal and they don't want to come to the table, that might be the reason because they don't know what's going to be at the table. Um, right. So food plays an important part in children's behavior still on that one. Prana, but adding in, it could be a child's first holiday that they're cognizant of what's going on, but also a first holiday without a family member or mm -hmm. a pet, even the mm -hmm. dog, you know, or the cat. So how can parents help make that first holiday mm -hmm. um, not focused on the sadness? 
right? Mm. So prayer now. Now you got a double shot coming Ooh, out. Okay. I know you can handle it, but wouldn't have sent it. I, you know, I can take both of these on because here's the thing, what you just said about making your daughter have ownership and taking the recipe and taking it further. Um, I think when we cook with children, when we bring in these traditions, also don't make it stressful and don't make it all about don't lick the spoon and don't touch this and don't throw the flour because that's what's going to take the joy out, right? Yes. If you're focusing on the experience, let them lick the spoon. Who cares? Like, who cares? Eat the batter from the bowl. Like, it's okay. This is what they're going to remember. If you're talking about holiday traditions, we're talking about holiday experiences, bringing joy is a big part of it. And being scolded and corrected the whole time I'm doing it is not a joyful memory, right? So relax about it. If the kitchen is going to get a mess, then clean it up. Just don't stress about it, right? So the process is important. The joy is important. The experience is important. And um, I had a thought come in when you guys were talking about sugar. So I want to talk about that and behaviors before I jump into the loss of the family member. Here's the thing the you know, Sometimes parents, I'm noticing this more and more, parents and teachers are very scared to say no to their kids. They walk what? around with eggshells. <laughs> you know we met these people, right? So Yes, a couple. Walking, yeah, and they, they walk around with eggshells and they're like, oh my God, you want me to say no to my child? Like what? Yes, I do want you to say no because if they're taking too much chocolate and too much sugar and you're the grown-up, and you're not going to disappoint them. And even if they, you disappoint them, that's an emotion. Talk about it. I understand you're disappointed. I understand you wanted the last chocolate piece. But guess what? I'm putting, I'm putting the boundaries here. You can have it tomorrow. Allow them to experience the disappointment. Allow them to experience it. And then you can nurture them at the other side, right? So giving guidelines with boundaries is so mm -hmm. key. Children are not grown up, so don't treat them like that. Sometimes we give so much agency to our children that their ego boosts up and then we don't know what to do with them and nobody can live with them. So love them, guide them, direct them. This is the job of the grown-up. Mm -hmm. And so if they've, yeah. had, <laughs> if they've had too much candy, it's okay. I give you permission to say no. Blame it on me. Prana said, I can say no to you. Blame it on somebody. It doesn't matter if you can't take it on your own, right? So... Create experiences that you allow grace for yourself, that you're not stressing yourself out because the kitchen is a hot mess and you haven't got everything up and everything wrapped and everything bought and la, 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 la. Allow grace for yourself. Allow grace for the kids. But remember, what is the experience you want them to walk away with? Mm -hmm. right? Right. That's what we're focusing on. Not what the is the emotion yes. for yes. the memory they will keep forever? And guess what? Joy is a memory of learning. Mm -hmm. We know this, that if there's no joy, there's no learning. There is no joyful memory being created in the brain. So you could go spend thousands of dollars and all you did was yell, yell at your kids and bark orders and tell them, don't do this and stop touching the ornaments and stop moving the ornaments and That's stop messing right. with the lights and don't move the decorations. If all you're doing is correcting, there's no connecting. That is not a joyful experience. So, and to your part about having family members missing. So... I know it's not the same, but in our family, we lost our dog in August. August 8th, we lost one of our dogs. I understand it's not the same as losing a family member, but we are still grieving him gone from our family. He, he, his picture is still on the mantelpiece because we still miss him. And so we've talked about that. How does that feel? You know, do you miss him? And allowing space to talk about the hard stuff. Mm -hmm. I miss him too. Like, you know, if my granddaughter brings it up when we're going for a walk, she'll just accidentally say, oh, remember when he did this? And so we go there with it. Same with the family member who's not going to be at your table this year and your heart is heavy from it. Maybe you could do like a, a going through conversation at the table. What do we remember about that person? Mm -hmm. what, what memory do we have that brought us joy? How do we feel their love? You know, we don't, it's not a taboo subject if somebody is gone that we forget mm -hmm. about them. I've lost actually two very close friends between November and October this year. And I'm thinking about those families too. So uh, this is a reality for all of us. And we miss people who are not with us. And it's okay to talk about them. Yes. And um, I want to, uh, I'm putting up here, please 
send in your comments and your questions. We love to hear them because you might have something to add. Just because we're the ones speaking as the mm -hmm. so-called experts doesn't mean we know everything. It doesn't mean <clears throat> one of you listening might have something to share that we can learn something new as well. So please do that. And Carrie, it's your turn. Go ahead. Thank you. I agree. <clears throat> Excuse me. I agree with everything that, that Pran has said. And I we also, unfortunately, we lost our family dog. Um, actually, he was he didn't know he was a dog. He was another member of the family. He just happened to have four legs. Uh, mm -hmm. We lost him the day before Thanksgiving. And even oh. though my twin boys are 21 year, almost 21 years old, it's still devastating because they don't remember life without him. Um, and so I encourage parents, and you can do this with a family member as well. Um, you can come up with something tangible. This is just a little ornament that I found and I, I put his picture in it. My boys haven't seen it yet. Um, oh, but sweet. we're going to, to um, I'm going to wrap it up for them. And then Christmas Eve, uh, we're, I'm going to let them put it up on the tree. So he's oh. always with us, um, especially at Christmas. And so having something tangible for a young child, whether it's a frame that you can you know, put on the tree. Um, I know there are some companies out there that you can send a picture in and they can make a pillow of, you know, of a pet or a person, whatever. But I think the younger the child, the more tangible it could be to, to help them deal with that loss. Um, one of the things, this is getting off the subject a little bit, but but not really because it's, it's just not about the holidays. It's all of the time. One of the things that I encourage parents to do if they, if they have lost a family member, especially around a holiday, but any time, is that you can take one of that one of the shirts um, of that family member and you can put it on a stuffed animal. And so the child can hold a stuffed animal wearing the shirt that belonged to grandpa or grandma or whomever. Um, you could have a pillow made out of it. But I, I feel that something tangible um, to represent that person is really important for young children. It physically gives them something to hold on to, which translates to emotionally having something to hold on to. What a sweet idea. I love that idea. I should tell that to my friend's family because she had grandkids. I should probably make something for them. Hmm. Sweet. Um, other practical strategies for um, stress before we move on to the closing comments? Um, strategies to give parents like um, I'll experience in class, they'll come to music class and class is over at 1045. And I'll see parents instead of the, letting the child take the moment to say goodbye to the kid they enjoy dancing with or marching with, they're pulling them out the door to get to the next activity. You know, come on, we have to go have breakfast with Santa Claus. Hurry up. You know, like, um, or, you know, and, um, everything is scheduled, mm -hmm. over scheduled. Um, and we get stressed if we're going to be late. We pass it on to the children. That's why um, I love that book uh, that um, Stacey Benji had recommended, The Balanced and Barefoot. You know, like it's important to let them have downtime. Mm -hmm. like we, you know, watch that. Elf. Every year we have to watch Elf. I could probably say all the dialogue and I really could do without watching it again. But my daughter's face lights up even though she's 33 now, you know. And um, so all those little special memories, the, you know, the Christmas story, just all those things connect and making conversation about them, taking pictures validating all the people that were a part of everything. So um, any one of you want to add to that? Any more strategies or suggestions to parents that are overscheduling? Prayer, and I think one of the things you said was cut yourself a break. Mm -hmm. You know, but other, any other? I would just add to it and I would just say, you know, slow down, slow down some more and then slow down some more. And, and stop. And then stop and then label the emotions and talk about what emotion are you feeling and what caused it. 
And, and, you know, when you're feeling stressed, overwhelmed, frustrated, whatever it is, your children are also feeling it. So giving them the vocabulary of the emotion and allowing them to express, okay, what am I feeling and what caused it and how can I help myself, right? Three parts to it. And if they see the grown-ups doing it, I'm feeling frustrated because you're taking too long. Okay, what can we do about it? Do you need my help? Um, there's one thing that I share with grown-ups is very often, sometimes if one sends channel is not working so for example i'm shouting or like yelling get your shoes get your shoes hurry up we're getting late so that's clearly the auditory channel right the auditory channel has shut down there's no information going in because it's not giving you the re result go pick up the shoes and go take it to the child now it's a tactile and a visual channel so okay i'm right there because i was getting tuned out here so here i am shoes are here look at me can you put them on or can you help? It'll take less time to do that than to yell at them again and again and again because the auditory channel is overloaded and they've tuned you out. So right. recognizing that behavior is a form of communication. What is this behavior telling me? What is this emotion? What caused it? And how can I help right now? Slow down, slow down some more and slow down some more. You're not going to catch on to these emotions if you are on rollerblades and you're going fast with life. And remember that children's pace is slower than a grown-up pace. Mm -hmm. And all the to-do lists that you've created and your schedule is so tight, you did that. The child didn't do that, right? You overscheduled. So mm -hmm. look at your calendar. Where can you cancel? What can you change your mind on? Where can you slow down? If you don't do it intentionally, you're going to miss the magical time that Christmas is, mm -hmm. holidays are, Hanukkah is, Kwanzaa is. This is magical from a child's perspective. And our overdoing and our overbooked schedule is taking the magic out of it. Yes. And before I, mean, I, before I pass it to Carrie, I might want to add too is to keep your normal, your, your normal schedule going. Uh -huh. Don't stop going to yoga class because it's Christmas. Don't Sorry. stop going to the library story hours because yes. it's Christmas. And the children might be resentful of the fact that you have stopped doing the things they enjoy right. because now you're busy. But also when you stop <clears throat> doing what you need to do to take care of yourself, you're teaching them that when the holidays come, stop taking care of yourself because you have to focus on getting all the work done. So exactly. Exactly. I agree with both of you. It's so important. And I'd like to throw out a strategy for parents and grandparents. If they find themselves in a situation um, where the child has become overstimulated and the child is upset about, you know, I want to do this, but I don't want to do that, whatever, whatever the situation is. And this works all of the time, most of the time, not just around the holidays. It's already been brought up that children are not little adults and they don't process information the same way. We already know that when children are usually having a meltdown or a tantrum, it, it, you know, let's use the holiday example again, since that's the topic of the show. I always encourage parents to think about there's always a reason. There's always a reason, whether it's what the kids ate, they're too tired, there's too much stimulation, they don't right. know how to express what their needs are. Um, and many, many times parents become frustrated and then the voices become louder and louder and louder. And so the parents are trying to yell over the kids sometimes. And then it becomes, you know, nobody even hears each other anymore. And so my, my, my closing strategy, if you will, to the parents is the louder your child may get, you get lower, softer, lower your voice. Because that child will hopefully, it may not happen in the first five seconds, Keep speaking softly. The child will co-regulate and come down to where you are to hear you. If it doesn't happen the first time, don't worry about it. It's, it's, it's a new mental program. It's a new set of behaviors. But I encourage you, when your child gets louder, you become softer. You become lower. And don't try to match their level of overstimulation. Yes. And um, I see we have a comment here from Nan, but um, it's not a letting me um, put it up on the screen. So um, Nan Prevost is someone I work with that works with mental health um, and children. And 
that is such a big issue. But mental health, especially around the holidays, mm -hmm. people that are already depressed just get more depressed. It's more, it's more pronounced. But um, Nan was saying, I felt as a family staying close to our faith and going to church kept things in perspective and kept us grounded. So to keep that tradition, if you are a family that is faith-based, then you make sure that you keep that tradition going. Um, okay. And so there are Maybe. other, excuse me? Sorry, go ahead, finish. Um, did you wanna say something about that, Prerna? I did. You talked about depression and I wanted to say that because you were talking about maybe have lost some family member this year, this holidays may be especially more tough emotionally. And uh, I, I, I think doing something for somebody else helps. So if you are that person who is feeling overwhelmed and stressed and depressed about Christmas this year or holidays this year because you've lost a dear one, See what you can do for somebody else. Go volunteer somewhere. Go give your time to somewhere else. When you pour into somebody else, it, it, the, the love that you get will take the sadness out of your heart. So just forget about yourself for a minute and think about somebody else. Mm -hmm. As hard as that might be to hear right now that I am, I'm overwhelmed and I'm sitting in my PJs and I can't think about the world out of the house. When you get out and just go and volunteer somewhere. Be an angel for somebody else. Being an angel for somebody else is going to change your perspective and change your point of view. So I just wanted to add with the mental health and sadness and depression that um, these are real. And if you're going through it, I'm so sorry. My heart goes out to you. But there's somebody else who's worse off. So do something. So pass the chain on. Mm -hmm. This is... This is one of the reasons why I love to talk with, work with you, because that's pretty much what I was going to say. <laughs> We've done um, this before. <laughs> I was going to say, get out there and help <clears throat> others. Um, like, as I said earlier about the Feast of the Seven Fishes, Joy had invited a couple that is friends of, of hers and Justin's to come join us for the Feast of the Seven Fishes. And they politely declined and said, that they were going to make sandwiches and deliver sandwiches to the homeless. Just go through the streets of the inner city and find people that were just sitting outside and feed them. Mm -hmm. um, and that kind of thing, reaching out is so important, which leads into the closing comments of what are some examples of starting simple new family traditions without adding to the to-do list. And I think one of them is having your child go somewhere with you to bring some happiness and joy. Maybe a children's hospital where they, you know, I used to grab my guitar and bring Joya with me to go sing somewhere for children or even older adults, you know. So what are some of those traditions we can start um, to add to the holidays to teach our children that? It's not all about Santa's coming and it's a wonderful experience. It's also about helping others have a wonderful experience. Mm -hmm. So who wants to go first? I think, oh, uh, yeah, Carrie. Because I have a thought that came to mind um, that I, I wasn't planning on sharing, but I, I, I'd like to share it. Sometimes the traditions that we begin with children when they're very young in terms of helping others become part of their own traditions. Um, and then someday when they have a family, when my boys from the time they were two years old, I used to take them shopping and we did um, the Toys for Tots program. And for those of you who may be watching in a place where that's not something that you are familiar with, you, you go buy toys for needy kids and you bring it to the fire station and then the firemen take it, um, I think it's to the Marines that they deliver them. So from the time my children were two years old, this is something that was very near and dear. And you don't have to have a lot of money to do it. And I realize that there are parents out there that don't even have enough money for their own, um, you know, their own Christmas gifts for their children. And it's not about the gifts, but it's about the thought. You can always, you know, write a letter. You can always, um, you know, make a picture. But this is something that we did with our children growing up. And from the time they were juniors in high school, they're now juniors in college, 
this is something they have adopted. They said, mom, dad, we, we don't need you to come with us anymore. They now do it with their friends. And so we still give them money to do it. And um, they go on their own with their friends. They go buy Christmas presents for needy children, and then they take them to the fire station. And I know that this tradition that we started when they were little is something they will continue someday when they have their own families. And I think that's what it's all about is how do you instill that that concept of it's not all about me and it's not all about the, you know, we talked about all the activities and things that, that a lot of parents like to do, but how do we give to others? So it's pretty important. That's I wonderful. Love it. I love yes. that. And um, um, before you comment, Prana, we have a, another comment from Nan. And for some reason, they are not showing up here. Maybe we need to have a meeting on the program to talk about um, mental health. Um, she said she loved that giving takes sadness out of your heart. And that's so true because that's what her life is dedicated to. So thank you, Nan, for the comment. I wish we could post it here, but it is showing on Facebook. So Prerna, we're, we're really like oh, getting you around here. So. Yes, yeah, so two things that we have done and I think we'll continue doing. And actually, um, so my mom is a big knitter and she makes scarves and hats all the time. Like she is knitting around the year. Mm -hmm. And so we are planning to go on Tuesday if the weather holds up. I'm going to take my granddaughter and my mom and go to a senior center and share some of her knitting because Aww. we all have too many. And I keep telling my mom Aww. that we can't wear any more scarves. <laughs> you saw it even when my granddaughter came earlier, you saw her one around her neck with it. So we all have them. And I'm thinking that this would be a good thing to do with my mom and my granddaughter to go together and to share some of the knittings that she's done. And the third thing, the second thing is the angel tree. So in America, we have this concept of angel tree, very similar to the toys for tots. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we've done this for a few years now. Our granddaughter gets to pick an angel. Uh, she usually picks a child of her age. So whatever age she is, she wants to find the tree and she is of course now reading so she looks for the cards and we buy something for that child and you know it's her it's all it's all led by her so she finds the angel she finds what we're giving who we're giving it to and so uh, we're just just opening our purses but really she's the one leading this <laughs> um but yeah you know I, I think um i don't know we have so much to be grateful for and uh, i'm not talking about materialistic things I'm mm -hmm. talking about tangible things that don't cost any money. And we yes. have a lot to be grateful for. Mm -hmm. And I think if this is all that we can remember for the holiday season, that we are grateful and we want to share the gratitude and joy with others. And that's what it's about. Mm -hmm. that's what yes, it's about. it is. Yes, it is. And I, you know, I want to say um, in closing, first of all, uh, Preeti is saying that's amazing prayer now. Yes. Um, those, I think that oh, one of the, <laughs> somebody's I, watching who knows my mom. I mean, uh, they've received gifts from her. <laughs> I think it's wonderful that you both were bringing in personal stories because it shows that you don't just talk your talk, you walk your walk. You too have some excellent strategies and ideas, but they're not just strategy, strategies and ideas that you share with others, you are actually doing this with your own family. So I want to thank you two for being so real and being such wonderful um, assets to have in the early childhood community. Um, will any of you want final words? Thank you. Happy holidays. Happy New Year. Stay safe. Remember your blessings and be kind to each other. That's all I have. <laughs> And I would second that. Thank you so much for having me. And the only other thing, I know we're talking about early childhood, but I feel that everything we've talked about today is really applicable to just being human. It's all of us, no matter how old you are. Yes, that is so very, very true. I want to thank everyone who, uh, both of you for coming on, everyone who watched um, the comments that were made. Um, I appreciate those. Uh, your names weren't showing up. I'm sorry, but that doesn't mean that we didn't notice and aren't grateful for what you had to say. Um, we love them. Um, 
in the chat itself underneath. I know that you two both shared your um, URLs, but you did it in a private chat. So please oh. <laughs> make sure you sent them to me. So thank you for that. Um, Sorry. They know how to find you guys. Um, but anyway, I want to thank all of you so much. Ladies, please stay on a moment till after the video so we can say some real goodbyes. Happy holidays to everyone. No matter what it is you're celebrating, every human being has the same type emotions. Just be sure to honor your own so that you are fully capable to help honor others. Um, I will talk with you soon and see you again in a couple of weeks.